apps make the world go round. And every month, or at least almost every month, I scour the internet for amazing Linux apps that I can share with you in a series that I have createdly called Top 5 Apps of the Month. And this month is no different. So today we're going to be talking about the Top 5 Linux apps for June 2022. Let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first one on the list is an app called Toip, or Toipe, not actually sure how you pronounce it, T-O-I-P-E. And this is a very simple application. Basically what it is, is a typing test for your terminal. It's very simple, and out of the box, it's actually not all that great. I'm just going to put that out there for you, because by default, it uses a dictionary that is very small. So you'll notice in the first couple tests that I run, it repeats words quite often. But that's okay, because you can actually, you by using a flag, tell it to use a different dictionary, and I'll do this towards the end of the B-roll. It will allow you to use the top 5,000 words or top 10,000 or top 25,000 words. And that makes it much less likely that one of the words repeats. So as I show in the B-roll, it does have several options that you can do. You can change how many words are in the test. So it be defaults to 30. You can set it to whatever number you want. So if you want a longer test, a shorter test, whatever. You can also change the default word list so you can choose from the top 50 top 500 top thousand top 2500 and so on and you can also choose from ones like the os dictionary or the commonly misspelled dictionary those are really cool lists and makes it a little bit more difficult if you want to use words that are commonly misspelled other than that there's not a lot of options here and that's okay because it doesn't need any it's just a simple typing test and it's really good so let's go ahead and move on to the next one Okay, so the next one on the list is called Metadata Cleaner, and this is also a very simple application. Basically what this does is it will allow you to add images or PDFs to it and then clean them of all metadata. So why would you want this? Basically, this is good because if you have a photo that you've taken like on your phone or something like that, that thing comes embedded with a ton of metadata and while some of the images that I show you here that are like screenshots don't have a lot of metadata. I actually do show you on the B-roll a couple images that have a lot of metadata in it. And while most of it's going to be completely useless to anyone who sees it, it is possible that some of that data could be used to track the image down. So I know a lot of phones actually embed the location in the metadata. That's not a great thing if you end up sharing this photo online. You know, So this application will actually take those pieces of data and just completely strip them out of the image and that can be very useful again if you're going to be sharing photographs or images or PDFs or whatever it happens to be online so anything that has metadata can be inputted into this app and cleaned up and it's a very simple application it can if you're going to do a lot of images take a long time so there's a simple clean option which will just take out par portions of the metadata, not everything, and that runs faster. Other than that, there's no options basically whatsoever. There is a clear all option, which is nice, so you don't have to clear them one by one once they're done. So that is metadata cleaner. Okay, so the next one on the list is called GPIC. Now, for the most part, I use this one in the most simple way possible, and that is just to use it for a color picker. And by color picker, I mean... I will select the pick color button and then hover over the color I want to know the hex code of, click on that, copy that to the clipboard so that I can use it in GIMP or something like that. Because for whatever reason, the color picker in GIMP has not worked for me in months. And that's cross distro. I don't know what's going on there. But the point is, is that this application has kind of been a saving grace because I always need to match like a logo color or something for a thumbnail. And this allows me to do that quite easily. Now, it does do other things. So it help you create palettes if you want to create palettes. Although from the brief amount of time I've played with it, it, it appears to be limited to four colors. I'm not sure if you can get more colors or how that works. Also, the color picker there at the bottom of the palette generation tab isn't all that intuitive like you'd think that you'd be able to drag that dot there in the center all around like you see me in the b-roll trying to do that apparently you can't do that you have to use the sliders along the side so it's not the most intuitive color picker there's definitely more intuitive ones but this is a feature if you want to use uh, an app for doing that you can also do things like 
have GPIC pull out the color palette from a certain photo. Now, the one thing that you'll see in the B-roll is that I don't really know what those images that I used for doing the color chooser actually looked like begin to begin with because there's no preview in the file picker. So, so I'm not actually sure how well that functionality works, but it is an option. So you can input a image and it will select a certain number of colors from that image that you can then use for whatever it is. Uh, one of the cool things is that you can add hexes and colors and stuff like that to a palette of your own. So you can save all those colors that you have selected over time into the main palette. Now I'm not sure if those things are things that you can export or not. I've never actually tried to do that, but I'm assuming that you can. You can also just click that select color button and then click on a color anywhere on the system and it will not only add it to your list of colors there that's like on the main screen, but it will also add it to your clipboard, which is the main functionality that I use it for. So that is GPIC. Okay, so the next one is an interesting one and one that I'm kind of disappointed that I'm only finding out about now because when I was a GitHub user, I used an application called GitKraken. And GitKraken was amazing. It has a had a ton of features and it allowed you to basically do everything you would possibly do on GitHub through a dedicated native application on your Linux desktop. It was amazing. The problem with it was that it was not open source. And while I could still use that because the GitKraken would actually allow you to use GitLab as well, I just basically got used to using the terminal functionality of Git. But if you are still a GitHub user, GitHub actually has their very own desktop application. Now, technically, it's only available for Windows and Macintosh. However, somebody has actually forked it and made it available on Linux. So what you'll see in the B-roll is me actually creating a new repository, uploading that repository or pushing that repository up to GitHub. You can do all that stuff right here in the application. You can also view other repositories that you already have and see local changes, push those or commit those changes upstream, push them. You can get pull so you can pull and fetch from the whatever branch that you want to pull if you want, if you're, you know, you're behind or something. And it does basically everything that GitHub can do. It's not as functional as GitKraken. I'm just going to put that out there. GitKraken does a lot more stuff and has a somewhat more intuitive in interface. However, if you want a simple interface for interacting with GitHub on your Linux desktop, the GitHub desktop package for Linux is actually really good. In terms of settings and stuff like that, there's not a ton of stuff here, but there are a few changes that you can make if you want to. Things like integration with GitHub Enterprise, things like choosing your default editor and your default shell. It's weird that they call it a shell because really what you're choosing is a terminal. A shell is completely different. I'm not sure why they would make that mistake. It's a little weird. But you can also choose between a dark and a light theme, you know, as you'd expect. So that is GitHub Desktop. Okay, the last one on the list is probably the most simple application on this list, probably outside of the typing app. And that application is called Amberall. And I'm, again, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's A-M-B-E-R-O-L. And I'm not sure why they called it that, but it doesn't really matter. Basically, what this is, is a music playing application. And that's it. That's all it does is play music. It doesn't manage playlists. It doesn't manage album art. It doesn't do any of those things. You add a file to it. It then creates a playlist of that file. So I added every single song in my music library. And you see me scrolling through them and... What's surprising here is I have like, I don't know, 50 gigabytes of memory. It added them really fast. And as you can see, I can actually scroll through these and the app like doesn't crash or anything. So it's actually very performative. It will perform really well, even if you've chosen a lot of songs to play. I think that it would work better if you just selected files of like, say, a particular album that you wanted to play then you can have a playlist that's just those things. But uh, it does work if you want to choose your entire music collection. But it doesn't separate anything by album or artist or anything like that. It literally just shows every single song in the f folder that you selected and then plays them one right after another. You can 
shuffle and repeat and all that kind of stuff. But other than that, there's not a lot of options. The one thing that you'll notice is, and the reason why you'd want to use this, is that it looks fantastic. Now, you don't really get a great sense of it in the B-roll because most of my music is horribly organized and none of it has meta the appropriate metadata. It's something that I really need to work on, but that's kind of beside the point. If you have the metadata attached to your music, the application will actually change color based on the album art, which I find really cool. So the best part about this is not only is it simple, but all it's very, very pretty. So if you are someone who likes to use applications that are much more uh, well-designed, Amberall is definitely a choice you should check out. So those are the top five apps of June 2022. So there hasn't been a video in this series for a couple months now. And I wanted to take a moment to talk about why that is. And really, it just comes down to the fact that real life has been kind of messy over the last couple months. And this series takes some time to put together. Usually, mostly, it's finding applications that actually work. Like, for example, this one here. I think I actually found, t like, seven apps for this list. These five are the only ones that I could actually get to work. So, some the other two, for whatever reason, like, there was one for Evernote sticky notes. It's called Eversticky. I couldn't get that to work at all. I'm not sure what the hell was going on with that. But anyways, it really doesn't matter. The point is, is that the series is back. So if you enjoy this type of content where I find a lot of applications and present them to you in a very brief overview, hit that subscribe button. I really, truly do appreciate it. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon and any of those other social media networks. You can find those links in the video description. Make sure you hit the like button as well. That really does help the channel. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Every one of my patrons is an amazing person, and I cannot begin to say how thankful and grateful I am to every single one of you who support me on patreon.com slash linuxcast so or on youtube as well the youtube members thing that is below the videos some of you guys do that as well so thanks everybody who supports me thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time